Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the session 2 review, conclusion and homework, Mary reviews and concludes the Removing My Loving Self two-day session and gives some homework to the participants for the following day. Recorded on the 8th of June, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Hello, hello. <laughs> this is a nice song, hey? You guys heard that one before? Yeah. Yeah, if you listen closely, it, all of the, break, the song breaks have a little theme associated to, to what we're talking about. Okay, so my role here this afternoon is just to revise the action-packed last couple of days, and um, talk about your homework as well. Have you enjoyed the last couple of days? Yes. yes. It's been really good. And it's lovely. The last group hit a little bit of a resistance point this last two days, the f so the first group that did this group. Uh, but you guys have stayed, like, here, and it's really great. Yeah, I think, I think Jesus has been able to cover some really good things. So, All right. So, who can remind me what is the name of this session overall? If we go to Miranda next to you there, Felix. Yes, now, release, Miranda. Yeah. <laughs> Releasing pain? No, Releasing the, oh, the, the name of the two days, the complete session. Remember our first one was, what was our first one? Yeah, developing, oh sorry. Understanding my unloving self. self. And now and it's removing my yes, unloving self. Yes, <coughs> So the last two days, everything we've talked about has all been to assist you in this process after acceptance and understanding of your unloving self into removing. Now the next person can tell me what the name was of the first... Sorry, of the first talk that we had, Christiana. Governing emotions. Governing emotions, yeah. Who found that fascinating? Yeah, yeah. It's good, hey? So, governing emotions. And what were what was the three? Who can tell me the three different classes, if you like, of emotions? Eloisa. Um, global, multiple, and single. Yep. So it had global both emotions. Yep. Uh, which positive and negative. Sorry. Positive and negative ones. Positive and <laughs> negative ones. Yep. And multiple event based emotions and single event based emotions. So let's talk a little bit, uh, just a quick revision on the global ones. What was something really significant that someone learnt there? What, what was the thing that stuck with you about the global ones, Lani? Um, that they're going to drive everything, your whole life. So, like, they can be negative or positive, like yep. the terror will drive all your, all your decisions, everything. All lack of decisions. Lack. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yep. the positive one was faith, which yep. will permeate every aspect of your life. Yes. And remember Jesus said, if you've got faith, it's going to get you through a whole lot of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas when we've... This terror and this, this global terror we've been talking to you guys about, um, this whole group, is an example of the, a global emotion that sits, it sort of controls or governs, it's almost like a governing body that says, no, nope, we're not going to this direction, we're not doing that. We're, it's, it's in charge, if you like, because you're holding on to it. It affects a lot of other things and a lot of other things you're willing to feel or do um, or risk or anything. And remember Jesus um, drew the picture of sort of like the doorways, the doorways in. And these um, global emotions sometimes shut off the whole cor corridor. And that's why dealing with them when they're in the negative 
can open you up to a whole range of feelings and new experiences and healing, really. <coughs> so dealing with the negative ones and developing the positive ones, such as faith. Yeah. Okay. Quickly, who can tell me a little bit about multiple event-based emotions? Anything that stuck out? Chris at the back. Uh, these are the ones that uh, happen again and again and again, such as your mother constantly putting you down and things like that. So they're not just one-off events. Yep, yep. And they end up then being kind of stored all together collectively and they have more of an impact on things then, and don't then they? And then they ultimately cause suffering. Yes. It's con continued pain that then accumulates as suffering. Yes, if we don't... Well, any pain we don't deal with ends up being suffering. But yes... You're correct. All right. And do you remember um, that Jesus answered a question, I think it was Fab for Fabio, where he was regarding something as a single event based emotion, so an argument between his parents. And Jesus said, no, look, this is a multiple event thing. That's a, that's a theme that was in your childhood all along and it's affected the way you view things now quite strongly. So... Can you see that sometimes in the past when we've been a bit confused about things, we've thought, I just have to deal with that emotion about that one fight and my life will change without recognising there's a, there's a lot more to this. This wasn't just a single day in my childhood. This was like a lot of months and years. And so there's going to be beliefs associated with, with each of these multiple event-based emotions, false beliefs that we have to deal with. Okay, so and the third one he said, so we had global, multiple, and single. And single's pretty clear, isn't it? And fairly rare <laughs> when it comes to negative emotions. Of course, this all works in the reverse as well. Have you thought about that? That we can have multiple event-based emotions that are actually positive like a teacher who was in our life for a whole year and made a big difference to our sense of confidence, for example. Or a single event with someone uh, that had a, prof a profoundly positive effect upon us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Tara? Um, if a child is subjected to something that they saw on television, that um, would be a single event that could cause them some fear or, you know, something violent. Would that stay with them as a single event thing or if they process that emotion, it would be gone? Well, any time you process an emotion, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but if you're talking about something specific like television, my feeling is that it really depends a lot upon the context that the child lives in as to what will stay with them and what will be processed and what will um, be regarded as a single event emotion or a multiple event emotion. Right. Do you understand what I mean? Like if yes. I see something on TV that's quite dramatic yeah. and then I go, in, I, the rest of my family either shames me or makes fun of it or agrees with it or, or whatever, now that becomes much more powerful Whereas if I, if I see something on TV and I have mum and dad who can sit down and talk about how I feel, allow me to feel how I feel, um, give me more information about what I saw, right. then it might not even affect me at all. So even making a judgment and going, oh no, that was really bad, um, you know, you shouldn't have seen that, it was just too violent. It's that judgment is going to create uh, an emotion in there, an injury. Yeah, well, yeah. that has more of an effect than what mm. they saw, your fear. Yeah onto your child, which is really multiple. And if you think about it in the terms of children, it can get to be global because they're living with your denial of fear from incarnation. Yes. Um, that has a bigger effect. Mm. So what, think of how awesome it's going to be when you deal with your global terror <laughs> yeah. for your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, also in this talk, Jesus did a really cool diagram that I'm sure you'll remember, maybe not, Let's see. And it was, it was um, contrasting God's view and our own view. 
Does everyone remember? It's a pretty impactful kind of a diagram, isn't it? Yeah, I was very impressed with it when we did the outlines. So very quickly, who would like to tell me our view of fear and pain? Amber? How do I see it? Um, we see that our current pain is pretty minuscule. Yes, we think, oh, it's not too bad. I don't even have any most of the time. Yep. Um, and we see the terror as quite substantial and huge. Yes. Yep, we go, whoa, terror, can't ever feel it. And then the um, rest is just our childhood pain. And we do view that, don't we, as bigger than our current pain. Yep. Otherwise, we would have felt it. We go, oh, I've got all this stuff from my childhood. Not seeing that, you know, this pain would be completely gone if we dealt with that. Yeah. Yeah, but yep. you can't just, unfortunately, you can't just dump, jump into the childhood pain. That's right. Damn. You're learning. That's yep. awesome. <laughs> okay, who, who wants to tell me God's view very quickly? You say, do you want, oh, you're the mic runner. Yvonne? Um, just well, remember to stand oh, up. Oh, yeah. yes, I'm sorry. Um, oh, it's funny up here. Um, God's view is that um, our current pain is the biggest that it's ever going to be unless we keep sinning. It's a really big chunk. And in terms of our negative emotions within us? It's much bigger. It's much bigger, isn't it, yes. than anything else? Yes. Yeah. And then he sees the terror as only being a thin slice. Yeah, and remember Jesus said out of 21 years of emotional processing, three months. Yes. Yeah. And our old pain, yep. our childhood pain yep. is... Yeah, um, old. And the good thing he said is the old pain and the terror are both, both fixed. Yes. But the current pain will keep increasing if yes. we keep sinning. Isn't, wasn't that amazing that it's mm. fixed? We, it's somehow fixed. we're not in touch with yeah. reality about that. Yeah. Like we think it's this nebulous thing and who knows how much more there's going to be. And when really it's finite. It's finite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's great. All right. Was there anything else from that talk in particular that stood out to you guys? I think that's the main things that he wanted, that he covered with you. He also talked a lot amongst the various groups about sin, the way our sin is created and how sin relates to these governing emotions, didn't he? Does anyone remember anything about that, Fabio? The refusal to remove terror and the refusal to um, have faith. Yes. So these two global emotions at play in our life all the time. When we refuse to develop faith, and when we refuse to feel terror, more sin and more pain. And conversely, when we develop faith and decide to feel terror, less and less pain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. What was the name of our next talk? Anyone? Yep, Mon, the back. <laughs> uh, deconstructing our facade. Yes. Now, in order to deconstruct our facade, we have to have done the work from the first session, don't we? Of acceptance. Yep, understanding where the pains come from, recognising the state that we're already in and accepting it without judgement. And there was some great discussion in this last two days, wasn't there, about judgement and letting go of judgement and growing this quality of compassion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see what he said about deconstructing the facade. He... he Reminded us again of the two major motivations of the facade, which are, do you want, what are they? Can you yell them out? Desensitising to pain and avoiding terror. Yes, yes. That's its main, its main role in life. And then Jesus talked to us about how addictions and codependencies and things, they all kind of aid us 
all up here in this facade area with the facade having those two <laughs> major goals to stay away from pain or to desensitize from pain and stay away from terror all these addictions and codependencies start to come in to play don't they yeah so what was the main way he said that we go about deconstructing the facade it was a simple concept, you said, Sandra? Uh, that you need faith, first of all. You do need faith, yes. But let me, let me go ahead and say what he said. It was very simple in that you had to just reverse what had already been done. So with the goal, the current goals of the facade are desensitising, from pain. So it makes sense that to deconstruct our facade, we need to sensitize to pain. But that's going to be tricky unless we start working on the other goal of the facade, which is to avoid terror. So we're going to have to, what? Feel terror, yeah. <coughs> so that's, he said, was the major way it's going to happen. But to do that, as Sandra said, we are going to need some faith that this is actually a worthwhile process. Yeah, yeah. And he also mentioned, do you remember, going back through the, the material from the 2014 assistance group, which is about you're going to have to have an intellectual awareness that develops into an emotional awareness and go through this process with many, many things in order for the facade to go away. Okay. There was also a great discussion in there, do you remember, about the justifications of the facade, the beliefs in this area that, that, it, that the facade are telling us are, are righteous, if you like, that the sin is okay. And do you remember what the crucial thing... Remember there was this little bit of confusion about the relationship between the pain that we feel in the deconstruction process and our causal pain. So what was the thing that Jesus really wanted to point out there? Laura? That the pain that we're experiencing in our facade is predominantly our addictions not being met. Yes, yes. And there was something else, wasn't there? Does anyone remember? I know it's, I'm asking you to stretch Mon at the back. So we can confuse this pain for this pain. Yep. Yep. Um, that unless we've accepted our facade, um, that any pain I'm going to be feeling is, oh gosh, sorry, uh, is only in a facade. Yes. So I need to accept my facade first. And when I accept my facade, deconstruct, then the real pain will be able to come. Yes. And the terror. Yes. And we, we can't get to that pain until this is gone. But also he said, you don't have to get to this pain for this to be gone, for the facade to be gone. Do you remember that? Because there was a bit of confusion about that, wasn't there? There was like, oh, no, I thought I had to get all the way to this causal pain and sin and release that before my facade is gone. But it's actually possible to remove all of these. And this goes even to your question today, Monique, about am I growing my will, my loving will, which actually comes from my soul, as I deconstruct my facade, but really we're deconstructing the use of our will in an unloving way. We're letting go of the justification for sin as we're doing this. So there's an awakening to what is love and what is not love, what is sin or what is error and what is truth. That's all happening here. And that can happen, in fact it has to happen, before we can even reach our causal pain. Does that make sense to everyone? I just wanted to revise that because I knew that was a bit of a sticking point for a few people. Ange? Uh, Mary, does that mean, would it be fair to say that um, 
The emotion in the in those in the techniques, the justification techniques, yes. would be more shame than grief. No, no. Uh, there can be shame, but there's definitely sort of the pain or grief of realizing that something that you think is righteous mm. is not, yeah. and you're not entitled to it, or, yeah. and it's actually painful for yourself and yeah. others. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of just seeing it as much as you can, identifying it in all areas of your life and asking for God's truth and receiving, you know, yes. feeling, feeling the extent of it, just <laughs> feeling the whole thing. <laughs> feeling the whole thing, yes. And he said two really important qualities we need, one's been mentioned, faith, faith. and the other one was humility. Humility, yeah. Yep. So humility is key here. I suppose I can say from my own experience, Ange, is that going through this process was a process of continually seeking truth, yeah. both yeah. personal truth, yeah. like what is really motivating me here, yeah. and then um, comparing that to God's truth yes. yeah. <laughs> and, see, and seeing also using some logic. Yeah. That made me feel some things yeah. about, oh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. give this up. You yeah. know, this is yeah. not. I uh, now I'm starting to be a bit more sensitive to what yeah. it's doing around yeah. me, yeah. all those kinds of things, um, and having some faith that if I kept going, things would get better. Yeah. Yeah. Now sitting here, I would say that it's kind of uncomfortable because I no longer feel. I haven't decided to surrender to this terror. Yeah. But I also cannot feel Go justified yeah. in acting in addiction, addiction. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And so it feels very uncomfortable to be in my yeah. own skin. Yeah. And when I do, because inevitably I do, because I haven't yet engaged my will to feel the terror. Yeah. So when yes. I do sin, yeah. it's just pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I can see that that's part of God's laws operating yeah. on me. Yeah. But... Um, it's certainly not as a result of me releasing causal pain, yeah. but I have certainly felt a lot of, well, it's kind of grief in giving up the concept of this myself that I wanted to have. Yeah, yeah, um, yes, yeah, I stand. Yeah. Uh, and sure, there's been lots of avoidance techniques, which are guilt. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> you it's know. just a matter of processing them as well, hey? Yeah, but also not not getting into fake emotion there. Yeah. Okay. Like I've talked a lot about self-punishment in the past and how that can be a bit of a let yourself off the hook yeah, yeah. Uh, technique and you can be like f crying about that yeah. but it's not helping anything. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's actually helping you avoid. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Does okay. that answer your question? Yep, thank yeah. you. Jules? Mary, what was the hardest part of dealing with the denial techniques? Was it getting through your anger and rage? Because that's where I'm feeling that I'm so stuck with this view I want to be the good girl because yes. I feel the bad girl. Yes. So my hook into the good girl, I feel when I'm <laughs> angry. Isn't it funny when you want to be the good girl, you're not supposed to get angry. That's but right. But when you pointed out that you're being not a loving girl, let's not call it a oh, bad girl. Yeah. <laughs> Not not very loving or yes. not very honest or ethical. That's right. Then you, you don't want to face that, so you want to get angry, but then you won't let yourself be angry because <laughs> yes. you want to be a good girl. That's right. That's the key thing to let go of. No, right. I'm bloody angry. You're allowed. Right. <laughs> because I'm still being the bad girl worse by trying to be the good girl. <laughs> totally. You just, yeah. It gets worse That's and right. worse, yeah. trust me. It just it spins yeah. out of control and I you know. end up at the end of the day going, well... I can't really tell myself I'm a good girl anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I am anymore. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's, yeah. 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 But I would say it's important to let yourself feel your anger, but recognize it as rebellion. Mm. It's nothing to do with this causal pain. Yes, yes. It's a rebellion. Yes. And it's a desire. Yeah. It's a desire to hold on to yeah. a certain belief. That's right. It's yep. justification for sin. Yes. Things. And you need to find out mm. what belief justice, is underneath yeah, that, why you believe it's justified. Yeah. Unless you do that, you yeah. can bash the bag till the cows come home and nothing will change. Mm. You have to work on changing that justification, justification or changing the belief that denial is better. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to this because it's not really staying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. It's good we record, hey? Yeah. 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 But, but honestly, and at every level, like for me, denial. I had the belief it's better to say nothing's a problem. Yes. It's better just to pretend and make nice. Comfort. I felt like shit my own excuse me my only my only avenue for comfort is addictions that i don't i don't i don't want to feel that this is wrong because i want comfort somewhere in my life and i had to work on that as a belief um anger and rage i felt like no if you are not really meeting my addictions you are being bad not me you and i'm allowed to be angry and i had to let go of that as a belief um and, and just even the idea that I could will my, willpower myself into being a loving person or a spiritual person or a fit person even or anything, healthy person, um, kind person, generous person, non-judgmental person, I had to really come to grips with that, that that's not going to work. Willpower doesn't work, facade doesn't work. And that felt like uncomfortable and painful as well. Yeah. But... Um, if I was just feeling anger all the time, which I did for a while, but not looking at the beliefs that were driving the anger, I never got anywhere. So I really obviously want to emphasise that to you guys about, about dealing with this facade. To me, it feels like a whole big jumble of beliefs and justifications for sin. So false beliefs and justifications for sin. And while you must be humble to even see what those justifications are and be humble to let them go as errors. You also have to seek the truth and faith is so essential. Faith that it's going to get better if you do it. Yeah. 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 And as you start to have experiences in it, your faith does grow. You realise, oh, yeah, I actually do feel better now I gave that up, even though I thought I could never give it up. Um, I do feel better. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, All right. So all the way through, Jesus is always bringing us back to the four tools, isn't he? And developing the aspiration. And in your homework, we'll talk a little bit about aspiration. So I'll just keep moving because I want to talk to you a little bit about the homework as well. Okay. Let's quickly just, what was the last talk that he gave? Releasing pain. Yep. Okay. Um, now, by the time we get to releasing pain, what have we already done? Who can tell me the three or four things that we've already done? If you put up your hand for this one. Uh, Suze? If you just stand up, darling. It's hard with your notebook. <laughs> <laughs> A bit loopy. Um, deconstructing the facade. We've deconstru- we've accepted the facade yes. and deconstructed it. it yeah. What anything else that you can think of? Uh, yeah, well, I've got the whole list here, so I won't pretend I remembered. <laughs> um, my global terror and fear of pain has been felt and released. I've released the terror. I've developed some faith in God's way. Yes. My pain is now quite natural. Yes. To identify and feel. Yes, beautiful. We don't have judgment. We've got compassion. We're not hung up in this terror of, oh, I can't do it. It's the end of the world. And what did he say it was like? Feel a fear, pain comes out. Feel a fear, pain comes out. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? (laughs) I want to get there too. (laughs) Yeah. And remember he said at that point, it's like you've almost become a child again. Which is a beautiful idea, isn't it? But you have the benefit of an adult's awareness. And you have a will developed as well. So remember when you're a child, you don't know much about your will and it's all just a new big thing. But by the time you get to this point, you have developed your will. And this is where you start to develop your loving will. And God can be, be involved. And you want God involved. If you ask for God's involvement, you can start to feel some of God's love the more and more you're feeling. And you can engage with God's laws really naturally. And it feels like loving laws that are supporting you on this process. Yeah. So somewhere to aim for, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. 
Let me just check that I've covered everything. Yep. Let's talk about your homework, hey? Now, part of your homework, I'll go through it all with you. Um, but part of it, you'll see if you've got your notes in front of you. There's three major questions with four sub-questions under each one. And the last question in the, each of the sets of four relates to aspiration. And I thought at this point it would be nice to share maybe a little bit about aspiration, because I've been feeling a lot about aspiration lately. And um, our spirit friends, we talked to them on our day off, and they talked about aspiration as well for, for you guys. And um, I live with, like, in my opinion, the most inspiring person on the planet. <laughs> so it's easy to um, rely on that, honestly, you know? But it doesn't really help your will develop, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Um, and remember in the first assistance group in the Developing My Will to Love, Jesus talked about inspiration being something that you're receiving from someone else and it gives you a little pep and a G up. But unless you have aspiration, it won't last very long and you won't act very, very consistently towards what you say you want. And it's easy, it's easy to to leave an event or something, feeling inspired, and decide you've got aspiration when it's not the case. And our spirit friends gave this cool analogy, like, like each of us is like a sailing ship and leaving the harbour and there's a strong breeze in the sails. That's the inspiration that heads you out to water. But then when you get out to sea, it's all still. And the aspiration is when you pick up the oars. <laughs> and you start doing the work. <laughs> and it can feel like that, you know. But, uh, but uh, they were saying that a lot of you get stuck at that point, you know. And I know for myself as well, I might have developed aspirations in certain areas, but there's some where I just honestly, I don't feel it, you know. I think, no, <laughs> I've got to be real here, I, I don't want to. <laughs> And that really was distressing me a little while ago. And I went through this whole process um, of feeling like, well, look, how does change actually happen in my life? Firstly, I need a good education, right? Information, good education. And I've got that. <laughs> and we, we've all got that at this point, haven't we? But then I have to decide to do something with that information. And once I make that decision, then I'll do something about it every single day until it's done. I will. And so I got really hung up because I was like, I'm trying to do something every day, but I haven't yet decided. <laughs> and it's causing me pain now. <laughs> you know, it's pushing and, and I'm getting down on myself because I'm not doing it every day or whatever. So I realised, <coughs> look, that's the point two is the will-based choice to do it. And we understand the difference between willpower and will from the first group. But I realised in order to even make a will-based decision, I need aspiration. I need the actual feeling that it's a good decision to make before I'll even make the decision. And so I went through this whole process and Jesus ended up helping me. And he's like, babe, you've just got to feel all of the false beliefs that oppose the loving aspiration. Does that make sense? You have to feel them emotionally. And he said it and I was like, yeah, yeah, I should know that. But because I was so caught up in my whole drama of like I'm not doing it every day and I've got to be and not being compassionate with myself, I totally missed the point. So I raise all that because I want to add a kind of a fifth sub-question that's optional for you in each of the categories which is about the beliefs that you have. So you might have already identified them anyway in the course of answering the questions, but it's just a little reminder. Okay, so let's look at the questions. The first major question is, what am I currently doing to develop faith? So what actions are being taken? 
What messages am I telling myself? What intellectual awareness is developing? What is the current condition of my aspiration to develop faith? And my fifth question, again, it's optional, but what are the beliefs I have that support this condition of my aspiration? So what are the beliefs that I have that support my aspiration? So you might find that you have a developed or developing aspiration for faith. So I want you to think about, well, what are the beliefs I have that make me think it's a good idea? And if you're sitting there and quite honestly go, look, I don't think I've, I'm developing faith, I don't even think I have the aspiration, then ask yourself, well, why, what are the beliefs that I have about this that are preventing that aspiration? Does that make sense? Okay. Just let everyone write a little bit. Second lot of questions. So is the fifth question is going to be the same each the, it, all the way through. So, What am I currently doing to remove my resistance to terror and fear? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, I'm doing this homework, you guys. I was looking at it today going, yeah. Even though I helped write the questions, I need to write the answers now. What actions are being taken? What messages am I telling myself? What intellectual awareness is developing? What is the current condition of my aspiration to feel my resistance to fear and terror? And fifth question, what are the beliefs I have that support this condition? So that's the same as last time. Now, if you, go, if you get here and you go, whoa, yeah, I'm doing nothing, then you can be honest with yourself about that, but you can also say, well, what actions could I be taking? Yeah. And the third set of questions, what am I currently doing to experience terror and fear? And the same sub-questions for that as well. So are there any questions about the questions? Yep, Laura. Uh, Felix, we just need you on the mic. Oh, jeez, sorry. <laughs> are you writing on your arm? <laughs> um, <laughs> When we're asking the questions about um, the terror, yes. Um, what if we're if we're focusing just on the denial techniques and the accepting the facade and stuff? Is it just the terror that kind of happens in that process, or you're actually referring to the global terror? That's I think you can do it for for any and every and all, <laughs> but don't neglect this global terror. There are, is some fear that you go through in, in deconstructing a facade, definitely. So it's important to grow our will muscle, if you like, to, to experience fear. But remember Jesus spoke in one of the talks about how if we go to this terror, this whole big house of cards dissolves. So it's worth at least paying some attention there. And you don't need to be, um, remember we're developing the compassion muscle all the way through this as well. <laughs> I can feel you, Laura. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay to know where you're at. And, and I strongly encourage you not to judge where you're at. You know, Try to develop this quality that came through all these last few, few days, didn't it? Compassion with self compassion with self, understanding, accepting where I'm at. That's the way we're ever going to work through this whole process. And honestly, in developing that, that's another global emotion, compassion for self. If you develop it, it's going to help you through every step. Yep. Okay. Sandra? I'm just wondering with the fear, what actions am I taking to take um, against, sorry, what? To, exp to expose fear and terror. What yep. if you think that you're doing something like an action by stepping into something, but it's totally an addiction and you're completely lost and you're just like fumbling through it and 
Yeah. yeah. You want to be sensitive to that. Okay. See if you can reflect on these things. Mm -hmm. Like I know for myself, I can reflect back. And um, so you're talking about the actions you're taking to remove the resistance to terror and fear. Yes. I can look back on the last eight years and I've done a lot of things which weren't actually very loving to mm -hmm. myself or to other people in some cases in what I was calling an attempt to experience terror. And I wasn't, my will was not engaged and I was actually treating myself like a naughty kid who had to just get out there, get over it and get feeling it without working through all of my beliefs and being soft with myself about mm -hmm. how the terror is, how the terror got there and how I feel about it. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, remember it's not just physical actions. There's emotional actions mm -hmm. and there's also habits in your day. Okay. Remember when we talked about the will muscle, you know, what am I doing daily? What actions am I taking daily? They might not be public speaking, but they're about addressing my resistance, ar addressing my false beliefs, mm -hmm. my feeling that I shouldn't have to feel fear. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. great because I really thought it was just physical actions. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, thank it's, you. It's important. Okay, Monique. <coughs> Uh, just to clarify, Mary, um, answering the question to what am I doing to um, address my terror, if I'm, could I just be, want, well, wanting to address my facade? Because is uh, just to be clear, did Jesus actually say, oh, I won't even want to go near my terror unless I'm actually um, working yeah. on my facade? Yeah. So I... I can't even see me even. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. Do you know yeah, I mean? and that's, that's, uh, I agree. Like, I mean, and I don't know because I've done it one way. This is how I've done it. <laughs> Deconstructed all of that. And my terror is, it feels like I'm in the, in the beaker jar where it feels like my terror is like that big instead of being that big, you know, because I've got all these false beliefs still running about it. But, even working towards accepting your facade, I mean, that's where almost everyone, you guys are at. So that's cool, you know. But don't forget that your attitude to fear and terror is largely creating this facade. Do you see? Remember, it's, the facade is, do, is doing what the, the refusal to feel terror wants. So the more you can just become sensitive to all your beliefs around this whole thing and to feel about what you actually feel about terror, that helps you in this whole process as well. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, rather than just go, not now. <laughs> yeah. I'll do that in three years' time if I get if Ex I exactly. my facade. And do you know why we say that? Because I've said that a lot. Um, it's because we don't want yeah. to feel terror and we need to face that feeling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're like, yeah. oh, no, I'm just stealing on this, this <laughs> patch. <laughs> yeah. That's, don't talk to me about anything yeah. else because I'm – and while it's true, in a lot of cases you do have to deal with the patch you're in to get to the next patch, when you're saying, no, I don't want to, yeah. that's, a lot of, uh, that's a refusal right there. Yeah. So it's good to identify that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any other questions on the questions? Jules? Mary, the penny that's dropping is with what Jesus is saying and what you're saying as well. We've got to feel the negative of why we don't with everything rather than... Rather than trying... Trying. ...to do what you've heard is the right thing. Yeah. Because often, and again from my own experience... You don't have a clue because you, you've been raised by people who haven't had an education in love. They've told you love's one thing. Then you've heard this other very inspirational guy saying all these other things. And then through all that kind of injured, hey, you know, that message comes through the injured perception of love and you end up extrapolating, oh, this will be loving then. Either I'll do the opposite of what they did or I'll, of what my parents did or I'll do a version of what they did but just with a little bit of, you know, other divine truthy stuff chucked in and you end up, it's not loving. <laughs> and But you're like, no, I've got to do the right thing and your willpower into that thing 
and you end up, it doesn't work. Yeah. So, and that came up again this afternoon. I can't remember. I think it might have been with your question as well, Mon, of just like, you've got to feel what you want, <laughs> what you want in this place and and begin to be sensitive to whether it's bringing you actual pleasure or actual pain and start to grow the humility to be sensitive to the, even the pain in there mm. and to really feel and release your justifications for why you want this thing rather than trying so hard. And also to start from why I don't want to. Yes. That's where, where I'm really getting now all the blocks of why I don't want to do this, why I don't want to feel my anger, why yep. I don't want to, don't want to, don't want to, don't yep. want to. Yes. Is the only way I can get to why I want to. Exactly. And that's exactly the point about the aspiration. Mm. You don't want to until you feel that's why right. you don't want to. And then, oh, you think it's not such a bad idea. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, good point, Jules. All right, guys, it's five past four, so let's wrap up. Jesus said to say, have an awesome day off. And what is coming up? It's exciting. <laughs> I want you to come back. Yep, that's a teaser. No, <laughs> no, honestly, um, the next, the last two days, we're going to be talking about your real self. And you guys, your real self is so beautiful. Your facade is saying it's not and trying to shut it down, but it's so beautiful. And um, Jesus and I love talking about the real self. And so, um, yeah, I hope that you find it inspiring enough to develop some aspiration. <laughs> enough, to pick up the <laughs> enough to pick up the oars, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, he wanted to. He wanted me to actually pass that along. That the next, the last two days should be really nice, and and I know that he loves speaking about that as well. And so yeah, thanks for your presence and attention. It's been really lovely, and um, yeah, go well with your homework and just work on this compassion thing with yourselves. Hey, that's my homework too. So yeah, <laughs> all right, guys, see ya. Mm -hmm.